Hola! Mr. War here at your service. Yes! Another math video. It's Eureka Math, my friends. That high level, rigorous math training. <laughs> anyway, these videos can be challenging you know, at times, but I'm here to tell you just do your best, focus, and I think that you're going to learn a lot. Now, our objective, and of course, our goal here, is to relate a fraction of a set to the repeated addition interpretation of fraction multiplication. Now, I know that objective sounds like, oh my goodness, Mr. Warren, E equals MC squared, okay, yeah, I know Albert Einstein was really smart. But in this case, we're gonna break this down into pieces and you will see that what we're gonna be doing is taking that fraction of a set like we've done in previous videos and then we're going to take a look at what we learned in fourth grade, the repeated addition, and how that's connected with the uh, fraction multiplication, okay? It'll be much easier. So let's go ahead and let me get my pen first. Ooh, I'm so excited how I love math. So let's start it off just really simple here, right? Like two times six. Yes, an expression. Now, what kind of like what are some of the different ways that we can interpret the meaning of this expression? You know, can we look at it? And some of you might be thinking, well, that would be like six plus six. That's right, like two copies of six would be uh, a way that we could express it. Or we could actually think just the word reverse, where we have six copies of two. Again, both are correct. And when you think about it, we just did that commutative property, showing that we can change the order of the factors in any way, and we still end up with the same uh, value, the same quantity. Now I'm going to go ahead and... Let me go ahead and just get an eraser. I'm going to clean this off. It's kind of in my way, okay? And what I'm going to do here is get, so 2 thirds times 6. So we're late for this fraction of a set. Now we're going to show this for repeated addition. Well, isn't that what we just did? We just did exactly that when we were showing just 2 times 6. So wouldn't this just be 2 thirds? Uh, that was kind of sloppy. Let me get my eraser. Clean up. Ooh. Look at that accuracy. Okay. So we have two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds. Finally got to the end there. So we have six copies of two thirds, much like what we just did above, something that we had done in fourth grade. So now let's go ahead and start recording some of this thinking that we have going on here with a tape diagram. So looking at this, so we're trying to find this quantity of. So if this were 6, then we're trying to find 2 thirds of that quantity. Well, the thirds let us know that we need to maybe break that up into thirds. And to find the value of one unit then would be 6 divided by 3, since we have 3. Well, let's first just write 3 units is equal to 6. All right, let's get that first statement out. And then what we could say is it's 6 divided by 3 is going to equal 1 unit. Okay, we're okay with that? So 6 divided by 3, and it can also, of course, be written as such. And we're trying to find out this quantity, 2 units. Well, if 1 unit is equal to 6 divided by 3, try to keep following me on this line of thinking. Wouldn't 2, and let me write this out in words, wouldn't 2 times 6? Six divided by three, wouldn't that equal that quantity? Because we already just said six divided by three is one unit, therefore two units would be just two times six divided by three. Okay, so then let's take a look at this. And I'm going to see if I can uh, group this here and then bring this down here so I can use this again. So I have my two-thirds, my six copies of two-thirds. And so in essence, this is our problem. We're trying to try two-thirds, six times two-thirds. So couldn't this also be written then as two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, plus two all over three? And isn't that the same? I, and I believe that it is. And now we take our repeated addition here and just say 6 times 2 over 3, since 
That's a multiplication expression that we've actually been able to do. And then um, now we have 6 times 2. So what units are we actually counting here? Well, it's actually thirds, right? We had 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 2 thirds. So we're actually counting thirds. In this case, um, what we're basically saying then is, is we're saying 6 times 2 thirds, okay? And that would mean 6 times 2 over 3, or 6 times 2 thirds, what we initially had. And of course, this was going to equal 12 thirds, because 2 times 6 thirds is the same as 6 times 2 thirds, whether you switch these two terms around. It's a commutative property. Again, it really doesn't matter the order in which we multiply. It's the same product. So how many holes is 12 thirds? Well, that's simply 12 divided by 3, right? And that gives us 4. Now, let's again use something else that we learned in fourth grade, which when it comes to renaming a fraction. So if we have 2 times 6, and I'm going to come down here. Now, um, 2 and 3 only have a common factor of 1. Okay? And it's shared by the numerator and the denominator. Okay? But we know that 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3. And I know the numerator here, the 6, can be divided by 3 to get 2. And so can the 3 d be divided by 3 to get 1. So if we, if we did that, uh, let me get another color here. Yellow would be ideal here. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that out by 3 to get 2 and divide the 3 by 3 to get 1. Now I have 2 times 2 on the top. And then I have my de de denominator of 1. So now I can actually write 2 times 2 over 1, which is 4. Okay? Since this fraction was 12 thirds, now it is four holes, and that's the connection between those two. Now, how do I know? Well, it's the same amount. Thirds are smaller than holes, so it requires 12 thirds to show the same amount as four holes, like we did here. So here we have two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. You need a lot of two thirds in order to make the four holes, okay? And there are three thirds in one hole, so 12 thirds makes four holes. It is the same. Let's look at another problem. Oh my goodness, what's this? A mammoth, really? A mammoth on my page? What are you doing here? Sir, uh, you need to find another home. Come on. There's just not enough room on this page for you two. All right. Okay, my yellow pen will work really, really well here. So we have three fifths times ten. Now, it's the same as finding the product of 10 copies of 3 fifths, much like you learn in, in fourth grade. As you can see, we could go all the way to 10. But I can rewrite this expression in unit form as 10 times 3 fifths, which is what the problem says, or as a fraction. So I could write this simply as 10 times 3 over 5. This is 10 times 3 fifths, which is going to equal 30 fifths, or we'll write it as, as a fraction. 30 fifths is equivalent to how many holes? And that would be 6 holes, okay? It's equivalent to 6 holes. So if 10 times 3 fifths is equal to 6, is it also true that 3 fifths of 10 is 6? We're going to kind of reverse this around. So if I'll say that again. So if 10, if 10 times 3 fifths here is equal to 6, is it true that 3 fifths of, of 10 is 6? Well, we know it must be true because if we took 1 fifth and 1 fifth of 10, okay, 1 fifth of 10 is equal to 2. 1 times 10, 10 fifths, so it was going to equal 2. So 3 fifths would be 6. The commutative property says that if we can multiply in any order, it doesn't make any difference. So this is true for fractional numbers as well. 
so the product would still be the same. Three-fifths is a little more than half, okay, because we have our benchmark fraction of a half, and so they're not equal to each other, but you can compare them, and it's a little bit more than a half. That makes sense there. So it makes sense that three-fifths of 10 should be a little more than five, and six right here is more than five. This time, let's find a common factor and rename it before we multiply, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we had 10 times 3 over 5. So if we were to rework this and rename it, what they mean is like when we refer to common factors. Well, 3 and 5 do not have a common factor other than 1. But if you notice, 5 and 10 do. So what I'm going to do is just get a different color. We'll get this one here. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. And this also has a factor of 5 because 10 divided by 5 is 2. And now you can see that we're going to have 6 over 1, which is equal to 6 holes. And again, that 6 holes is the same as 3 fifths, or 3 fifths times 10 of that 10, because we decided that 1 fifth was equal to 2. So 3 fifths is going to be equal to 6, 2, 4, 6. And of course, 5 fifths of 10 would be all of them and would be 10. Now, Well, let me go ahead and give you the code word. You're going to get it all at once. Imagine that. There you go. That's a first. Now, my friends, I hope that that helped you with relating a fraction of a set, which is what we did here, and how we used repeated addition to interpret what fraction multiplication was. And that's basically what we did. Now, live long and prosper.